If you wanna make money from vibe coded apps, you're in the right place. I could have done this YouTube channel for a different type of developer, but I wanted to do it for creators and entrepreneurs like us who wanna make money, whether it's a SaaS empire or some side hustle cash. In this video, I'm going to go rapid fire through a bunch of the ideas that were in my head for vibe code app monetization. I've sold two of my apps. I've had at least four more that have made $1,000 a month. And I kind of just wrote down everything in my brain that can help you make money from a vibe coded app. Two quick things as always, you can find a link to literally these notes that you're looking at in the video description. And number two, this is less of a step-by-step -step video and more of a like, you know, 10 lessons I learned sort of video. I hope that's okay. Numero uno, build with your audience in mind. If you're not building specifically to monetize, five code, do your hearts to dire, do cool stuff. If you are, you should be able to clearly picture who your audience is, really before you even start your project. And not only that, but where do they hang out? How are you going to reach said people? If you're building an app for elementary school teachers, how are you gonna get them? Where are you gonna go? What communities online, what communities in person? Start your project and build your product project with your audience, your avatar in mind. Well, how do they use the thing? What are their problems, challenges, frustrations? How do they think? How do they work? How do they move? Are they on the laptop? Are they on their phone? You should consider these things in detail before you start and as you build your project. Number two, build with the intent to sell. Even if you don't care about selling down the road, it's generally just like really good advice. It's good practice to build your business as if you were gonna sell it. And there's a few things that come with that. Number one, keep financial records. It will be helpful. Yeah, it'll take a little bit of time, but it'll be worth it. Number two, create a, like a Gmail account. It doesn't have to be your public email, but create an email that will be easy to pass off to a buyer, right? If you are signing up for third-party tools and libraries and softwares or whatever, have the Gmail that is just like, hey, you can have this Gmail account and that's the keys to the project. Now you can log in to all these other things. What that demonstrates to a buyer is competence and that you know what you're doing. It's actually really attractive for a buyer, right? So you're gonna get better offers. If you can demonstrate, I have an SOPs folder that is Loom videos of how I do everything. That right there is a huge green flag for buyers, right? Same thing with the email. This is going to be easy to transition. Buyers really care about that. Uh, another thing buyers care about, it seems obvious, but I ignored this, don't do what I did. They care about this growth line. Is this the right way for you? I can't remember. This is all they care about, that revenue. When they're looking in Stripe, they just wanna see that it's going up. Yeah, it'll, it'll zigzag and you'll have months of growth or whatever. Don't let it trend downward. Think about this as you're planning your launches and how and when you're gonna get people in, what your revenue looks like. It doesn't have to be like this. It just has to be like this. They don't want to see this. Red flag, and they will ask questions. Ask me how I know. It's because I waited too long to sell a business, and then it kind of like plateaued and it started falling off, and then it was just, why is this happening? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? That's the only question I got. So when you are planning things and how you're gonna grow, when you're gonna grow, et cetera, this is what buyers care about right here. Doesn't have to be this, just growth. This next one is a big problem. Your app doesn't have to be big, especially when you start. I think it's good to have aspirations. I think it's good to want to make a lot of money. And really, I'm not even talking about the money. I think you shouldn't try and tackle anything too large too quickly. And I don't mean that from a, like a tech perspective. You might have trouble or issues down the road. And I'm talking about selling it. It's hard to sell a Google clone with a ton of different features. It is much easier to tackle one tiny problem for one tiny audience, right? Plumbers. And we just did this one teeny tiny thing. It's easier to communicate. People can make sense of it better and faster, which is insanely important in a world with AI slop everywhere. AI slop everywhere. People are getting overwhelmed. You need to be able to sell somebody on, here's what I do. Here's what it does. Boom, 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 boom. 10 seconds or less. They understand it. Start with that at least, right? You can always add more features like I did with Topical Map AI. It was a tiny app when I first launched it. I didn't have to justify, here's why you pay $199 a month, even though it grew into that. No, it was more like, hey, here's a $9 a month problem and people can make sense of it and then I can grow from there. Hope that is helpful. This next one is a, another like big picture monetization strategy. Your app, your project, 
or your feature or whatever. It doesn't have to be brand new. Nobody's seen it before. If you want to be a billionaire entrepreneur, maybe you think like that. But if you want to make $10,000 a month, it doesn't matter. Different, yes. Brand new, nobody's ever seen before, no. So here's what I mean by that. You need to do something different and you need to draw attention to it. Your USP, unique selling proposition. I think that's the acronym. Half, not half, several of the apps that I have built have been combating copy and paste. I don't like using my mouse or trackpad. I like my fingers on the keyboard. I like point, or at least clicking buttons. And so I have vibe coded projects where it's kind of just the same thing that exists already, but mine has more keyboard shortcuts or mine has like buttons, a point to click sort of thing. And I drew attention to it. That's how I stood out from some of my competitors. Hey, it's this, but with keyboard shortcuts. That's actually, kind of a good marketing strategy. Not necessarily you, but different and interesting. All right, time for a hot take. Should you do a lifetime deal or not? I think most softwares should be subscription models. $9 a month, $19 a month, $29 a month, $99 a month, whatever. Should you offer a lifetime deal where somebody has access to your entire app for a one-time payment of fill in the blank? Yes. When you start, yes. I think it's a good decision with two notes in mind. Number one, if you have a high variable cost, like an OpenAI API key, if you use AI in your app, those API tokens cost you real money. And so you might have power users that just use your app like all day long and you might lose money. That might decrease the value of a lifetime thing. If you don't have a lot of that, if you can scale almost infinitely with more users, Yes, I think a lifetime deal is very smart. And here's the other thing, my second point, it gets people in the door when you first start, which will make your app better. Testimonials and feedback. This is what you need when you start a vibe coded project. You need testimonials, people who use it, actually enjoy it. Please collect the testimonials, so important for future marketing, future promotions. And then feedback, you want people using your app, period, whether it's free, or there's a lifetime deal or whatever. The more people you can get to use that, fix bugs, new features, make the app better, and that sort of stuff. The goal isn't just to make uh, $3,000 a month right there in month one. The goal is to have a really good product that you can eventually build into $3,000 a month or $30,000 a month and beyond. And lifetime deals can help you do that. Hot take, I know, some people would argue me that, and that's okay. Speaking of hot takes, my hot take, uh, pricing, advice. Nothing in the middle. How much should you charge for your product? Nothing bland, nothing boring, nothing in the middle that people would be able to easily predict. Pricing, how much you charge, is a marketing strategy. Two things. Which is a better car here? The $250,000 Ferrari or the $25,000 whatever? People think, it's not always true, but they think a product is better if it costs more. They see the higher price tag, they equate that in their brains with quality, premium, it's probably better. We don't even know why, but it's expensive, so it should be better, right? Not always true, but that's the way people think. Or you could legit undercut your competitors as a strategy. Dollar Shave Club, it's right there in the name. Uh, they thought razors were too expensive. $1 a month or $1 a week or whatever it was. I don't have to shave that often. Uh, we'll send you the razor blades. That's their marketing strategy. That's how they get attention. That's how they are different from their competitors. It's like ruthlessly undercutting and then they can jack up prices later, which is exactly what they did and now they made a ton of money. But the point is be intentional and strategic about your pricing, right? It's not just willy nilly, don't just copy what your competitors do. Do 10X what your competitors are do or do 10% of what your competitors do and let that be a thing in your marketing, in your branding, in your copywriting, in your emails and all that thing. Let that be a thing that you talk about. Next up, uh, how to get people to check out your app. Partner with people with existing audiences. This is a very difficult thing in the digital product world. Courses, memberships, uh, online business of all types. It's hard to get partners because there's a lot of competition out there. There's less competition for SaaS software, right? Because historically it's been done by giants who needed a big budget and lots of people. But now you can vibe code a little thing that is pretty different than just a little course. I have partnered with my friend Liz on uh, listgadget.com. I partnered with some SEO people for Topical Map AI. Kind of an accident, I just kind of fell into this partnership. They did a lot of the marketing, I built the app. And it's actually worked pretty well. It's a thing that I like. I don't like to do marketing. 
actually don't like making these YouTube videos most days. So if I can find somebody who has my audience of people and I can partner with them, literally 50-50, we split everything, including the sales price if we sell the app, it's actually a really compelling pitch. It helps if you know the people first. And so you should always be building relationships in your industry, in your niche or whatever. If you ha don't have that yet, start today, but still it's a good pitch. Partner. And a quick note I wrote down, three times you can sell a vibe coded app. So th the three times are as follows. Number one, you create something, it works reasonably well. It's pretty clearly branded and the homepage is filled out and you got copywriting and you got a logo, etc. You can just turn around and sell it. You're not gonna make $100,000. You might make 10. You could probably make 3,000 or 5,000 with zero customers. If it's really good, you could definitely make 1,000. And there are marketplaces out there that sell starter sites or starter apps or whatever. Again, it needs to work and you need to demonstrate that it works and that it has potential there and how it's different from its competitors, but you could sell that. You could sell that app. The other one would be right at the one year mark. That is, I think the minimum. If you're going to try and get your own customers, get your own revenues built up and then sell it as quickly as possible, the minimum I think is that 12 month mark because that's what most of the, the brokers I've worked with, the people who are buying apps, they wanna see that. This has been around for more than a year. They wanna see that. And the third one is never, or years down the road. I think selling is a little overrated, having done it twice now. And not that it's super hard, but I don't know. It's nice to have monthly recurring revenue. And so approach your business that way. I don't know if this is an interesting point or not. I just, it was in my brain, I put it in my notes, etc. Really quick, uh, here's what the selling process has looked like for me personally. Again, everybody's a little different. And again, this is for like that 12 month and then sell sort of person. Number one, you already have your financials in place. You have customers, you've been marketing, you've been selling, you've been trying to grow, you've been adding new features. You're a big boy business or a big girl business. You've been doing this. That's, that's what you need to do before you even think about selling. There you go. Second step of the process is to use a brokerage. Flippa, Acquire.com, Empire Flippers. There's a few more big ones. I've worked with those companies right there. Uh, they just make, it's worth it, right? Yeah, you pay 10% or 15% or 8% or whatever it is in fees from your total sales price. It's worth it. They do a lot, right? Not only do they have a marketplace of buyers and connections, but they're also gonna help you sell your app. They're gonna tell you what to put on your listing. They're gonna help you with the documentation. They're gonna help you communicate back and forth with the buyers. They're gonna help you answer questions. And then if you sell your app, they're gonna help you with due diligence. They're gonna help you with transition and that sort of stuff. All of the brokerages I've used and worked with so far have been really great and it's worth the money. So there you go. After that, what should you expect? You should expect a lot of questions, a lot of Zoom calls. No one's gonna just buy the app outright, whatever you build. You're gonna talk to people. You're gonna wanna be able to present yourself and also show them, here's what the app does, here's how it makes money, Here's a list of frequently asked questions. Here's my Google Drive folder with the SOPs. Here's my transition plan, how I'm gonna hand it off to you. You go into calls with that and you're gonna be, you're gonna be well set, right? That's what buyers are looking for. Ooh, this person knows what they're doing. They want to see that. And then anywhere from a week to three months, probably until you get some offers. And then you go through a due diligence period where they're checking everything and you know analyzing the app even deeper. And then hopefully you close and make money. It's actually, simpler than I thought it would be. There's still a lot of work involved, but it's actually not that bad. You can do it. Last thing to close out this video, just some things I had in my head. Show your product in action. And I'm talking about the homepage. I'm talking about the emails you send out for marketing or sales. Software, more than any other product type, can be communicated. You could tell somebody what it is best, easiest, through video or GIFs or images, screenshots for that matter. Just show the product in action. That's harder to do for an online course, for example, but when you have software, it's easy. Just take a video, take a GIF or whatever. Here's how it works. People can literally see it in like four or five seconds or less. That is good marketing. Next up, sell the benefit, not the feature. This is a, an age old copywriting technique, which you probably have heard before. Talk less about the features and even quite frankly, like the behind the scenes. You can talk about that stuff after you have talked about, here's what my app does for you. Your audience wants more money, more time, more recognition, influence, status, happiness, <laughs> right? That's what people, that's what human beings want. How does your app do that? Talk about that. That's the benefit of using your app. And then you can 
talk about the features. Here's how, right? We give you this by doing this, blah, blah, blah. Benefit feature. That's just always important to note. You probably heard that a million times, but I wanted to mention it anyways. Last point, but I think a very important one. Be interesting in some way. Be different. Be intriguing. Be interesting. You should read Purple Cow by Seth Godin, if you haven't already. One of the best marketing books of all time. I think when people vibe code, especially from a design standpoint, they tend to be bland. Even if it looks good, it's good design. It looks snappy. It looks like something that came out of Silicon Valley. I don't actually think that's the best strategy per se. Maybe if you want to sell for like $5 million, you should be catering to a mass market of people. But anything less than that, I think it's better advice to be interesting. Be different. Be weird, right? Be yourself. Be goofy or whatever that is. I think the more you can incorporate that into your app, your design, the flaws, the messiness, the perfection, whatever it is, let that be your thing. Let that be your brand. Let it be you. Be interesting, be different. And that's all I got. So drop me a fat emoji in the comment section if you've been following along with this course. Is this course over? I don't know. You tell me. At the moment, this is the last video in my queue. So you can drop me a comment with anything else I didn't answer. Or if you have any questions, I'm here for you. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. Adios.